Hi, I'm Susie. I'm a plant-based chef. We're here in the Pernod Recipe Kitchen. I'm joined by Paul. Hello, um, I'm Paul Kroon. I'm a research scientist at the Quadrum Institute Bioscience here in Norwich. Um, and, and Susie mentioned we're in the Pernug kitchen. Uh, so Pernug is the name of a project we're currently working on. And the ambition of the project is to try and give particularly vegans and vegetarians good ways of increasing the, their, their access to any amounts of, of particular micronutrients that they consume as part of their diets. And today we're going to be talking about iron. So we're going to be making a tomato and spinach um, dal, which is lovely and comforting, great for uh, warming you up. It's also very nutritious and cheap as well, very affordable because lentils cost pennies. So we're going to start with um, putting a bit of oil into a pan. We'll just put a tablespoon of oil. And then we add some onion to the pan. Now we leave that just cooking for about five minutes. So we put the lid on because then that will saute nicely. So why is iron so important in my diet? Why do I need it? Um, iron is absolutely crucial. We all need to consume iron. Um, why do we need it? The main function of iron is to carry oxygen around our body and our blood. Um, and it does that by, by being part of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is a, is a, is a big protein. And the iron that is part of that protein is what actually carries the oxygen in our blood. So it's critical for that. So we need to consume enough iron to replace the iron that we're losing. And there is some regulation of how much iron we, we take up from the food we eat. Yeah. So if we're particularly uh, in a good place with regards to iron, there's lots of iron in our body stores, then at the level of the gut we'll absorb a little bit less because we don't need so much. If you're short of iron, your iron stores are low or you might be anemic, then you'll tend to absorb more. So, so the regulation of how much iron we take, in up, take up is, is there. But actually the critical thing is making sure we get enough. Right, okay. Um, and that's particularly important for vegans and to some extent vegetarians because of the, of the types of iron and the levels of iron that you find in, in plant-based foods. Right, okay, so you need to eat a lot more. Yeah, so, so for example, um, so heme iron that, that you would find in, in, in mm -hmm. meat uh, and fish is relatively very bioavailable. And okay. what that means is if you eat, um, you know, say 100 grams of meat, you might absorb 25 or 30% of the iron. So it'd go from your gut and end up in, in your red blood cells or in your iron stores, right. you'll absorb it. If you take um, a food, a plant food, which has uh, got uh, things we call iron inhibitors in it, for example. Yeah. So it might have the same amount of iron, but you might only absorb 5%. Okay. So you'd need to consume a lot more right. to absorb the same amount of iron. Right, so next we're going to add ginger and garlic. A lot of flavour going in there. Yep, it's going to be very tasty. There we are, pop the lid back on again, give that a stir. There we are. Leave that for another five minutes. Are there any signs that I would be deficient in iron? How, you know, how would I feel? Yeah, so the signs that you might be deficient in iron, essentially the, the, whole, the whole set of conditions is called anemia. Mm -hmm. So anemia is when you're essentially not able to carry enough oxygen around in your blood. And the main reason for that is there's not enough iron. The signs of that is, is you might, just, might start to feel tired, maybe weak. If it's very severe, you might actually see a change in the colour of the skin because there's not enough red blood cells in, okay. in your body carrying yeah. oxygen around. And so things like fatigue are the first things that would really come about. Yeah. There, are, there are some symptoms of very, very severe, you know, iron, uh, iron short, uh, being deficient in iron, um, but they're quite rare. So how can, how can I get tested other than go to the GP? Well, I would always recommend that you do go to your GP. Yeah. Um, although you can access some blood tests, um, you know, package gets sent to you, 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 you go on the internet, package gets sent to you, you send off a blood spot and they tell you a, a number. If your GP and the NHS are doing the assessment, they'll do what's called a full blood count. Yeah. And that's measuring lots of different things. The amount of haemoglobin in your blood, the size and shape of your red blood cells and various other things. And then somebody who has the expertise, a clinician, a GP, will interpret the results. 
Okay. And then know whether, you know, because sometimes a slightly low hemoglobin is, is not considered an issue because of everything else around looks normal. Right. So I really wouldn't recommend that people try and assess their iron status themselves. Okay, so this is much more complex than we think. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing to do is we <coughs> add the spices. So we've got here um, turmeric, cumin seeds, and curry powder. So we add that to the dish. Give that a stir. Just make sure that the spices get um, get absorbed a bit and so that they're not too harsh. They'll start to soften up a bit. And the next thing we do is add, these are red lentils and they've been rinsed. So they've just been rinsed but not soaked. That's right, yeah. You don't need to um, soak red lentils, mm -hmm. which is great because they're just quick and easy to use. And they don't take very long to cook either. Yeah. Like 15 to 20 minutes. In the tomatoes and some stock. So we just bring that to the boil, put the lid on and let that cook for about 20 minutes. Just keep checking it because it might stick slightly and then you can just add a little bit of water. So we'll put the lid on that and then take it down to a simmer. So Paul, just tell us a bit about the ingredients that we put into this recipe. Why are they so significant? Um, so what, what we've done in the project is, is look at vegan recipes, looked at plant food ingredients that are high in iron, yeah. particularly high in iron, and then and selected recipes that would therefore contain more iron. Yeah. And then we've taken a further look and, and maybe some of those ingredients, we could swap them. So yeah. we swap a low iron ingredient for a higher iron ingredient. Uh, and so on. So some recipes have been slightly changed, a lot of recipes are the same, but we've been trying to look particularly for recipes that contain ingredients that will mean that you'll get a, a fairly good dose of iron when you, take, when you consume a portion right. of, of that food. So in this recipe we've got uh, spinach and, and coriander, which, which are reasonably good sources of iron. You find lots and lots of iron in, in spices. So, you know, if you oh, like okay. to add spices for flavour and heat, then that's another a good source. Of course, you don't put too much in, but then the that they have high, high yeah. concentrations. Uh, and things like lentils and other pulses are also good sources of iron. Are they? Yes. So once this is cooked for about 15 to 20 minutes and, nice and the lentils are nice and tender, then you add the spinach. So add a few handfuls at a time. Give that a good stir just to wilt it down. It won't require much cooking. So what are the benefits of spinach, Paul? Well, as a dark green leafy vegetable, as, as we mentioned earlier, it has got uh, you know, a good content of iron. It's a good source of iron in a diet. And the other thing is about green leafy vegetables, um, along with other, uh, other fruits and vegetables, is they contain vitamin C. And vitamin C is important when we're talking about iron because it promotes the absorption of iron. So if you have you know, a, a dish where maybe there's some anti-nutrients in there, things that will, will hinder the absorption of iron, things like phytate uh, and polyphenols, then vitamin C can help because it will, it, will, it will allow that iron to be more bioavailable. So more of the iron you ingest will actually be absorbed from, the, from your gut and be able to do good things for you inside your body. And by adding the spinach at the end as well, you're preserving that vitamin C because vitamin C can be destroyed by heat. Right. Okay. So by adding it at the end, you're, you're, you're retaining most of the vitamin C in, into, into that dish. Yeah, okay. And it also looks better as well. And it does nice bright better. green yeah. rather than a sort of yellowy colour. Indeed. Great. Okay, we're nearly ready to serve. It smells gorgeous. Once um, the spinach has wilted nicely into the dal, we can start serving up. So in here, I've got some brown rice to serve with it. And then we'll finish it off with a squeeze of lemon juice. So is that a good thing? It's a very good thing. So, you know, lemon juice and citrus juices are really rich in vitamin C, so that's going to really help you absorb the iron that, that's in the dish. Brilliant. Okay. And a little bit of coriander and finally some chilli. So a lovely dish and, and hopefully it's going to benefit you in terms of the iron that you would absorb from that. So where can I find out about quantities of iron in foods? It's very easy to do. So we have a, a dedicated team at the Institute who are responsible for, for 
putting together that data for the UK. It's called the Composition of Food Information Data Set, and, and that's a, a government data set. But it's very easy to access that through the Quadrum Institute of Bioscience website. We'll, we'll give you the link, but you go to the website, you look for the, for the Food Data Banks team, uh, or the name may change soon, uh, but you'll be easy to find. And in there, there's a searchable database link, and you go into there, and then you can put in the food that you're interested in, and it'll tell you the quantities of iron, other micronutrients, and all the things like the protein and the fat and the, and the carbohydrates as well. Brilliant. That's really useful. Right, let's dive in. Let's give it a yeah, go. Yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah. It looks and smells wonderful. Mmm, mm. the flavour's great. Really good. Lovely. A little bit of heat and chilli. Mm. Very nice. I love all the spices, they're really good. Good combination. A really good way of flavouring up the, the dish. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And it looks really colourful. Mm. Good. And good for you. Mm. 